Aniara, a giant space elevator, leaves Earth after it's no longer inhabitable by humans. Passengers are on board, some talking quietly among themselves, others resting. A mother asks her child if they want to say goodbye to Earth. Another woman looks out the window while others pray as the elevator moves up to dock with a large spaceship, the Aniara. A man over the PA system asks passengers to remain seated until instructed to do so, and wishes them a happy new life on Mars. Passengers begin to leave their seats, and a woman leads the way into the spaceship. On board the Aniara, Murr enters her room using a keycard, dropping her bag at the bottom of a set of stairs. She goes upstairs to find Mima, an artificial intelligence created to recover passengers' memories and emotions of Earth before its pollution and disasters. She takes some deep breaths as she remembers a moment from her past. A video of a woman called the Astronomer welcomes passengers aboard the Aniara, a state-of-the-art spaceship that will journey from Earth to Mars in three weeks. The video is being broadcast across the spaceship as passengers file onto the craft and find their rooms. Another alert comes on the PA system, announcing that passengers need to find their seats and lay down for takeoff. Murr enters her bunk and finds the Astronomer is her roommate. They buckle their seatbelts as the Aniara's anti-gravity shield turns off. During the first hour of the voyage, Captain Chiffon makes an announcement that the Aniara is expected to dock with Vias Marineris within the month. Murr hosts a Mima Hall tour, and many decline to offer to join. She leads a group inside her room to continue the presentation. The group walks inside to experience Mima for the first time. Murr instructs a woman to look down to begin the immersion. Using a screen, Murr is able to see what the woman is seeing in her memories. Murr begins to explain Mima to the group when all of a sudden the ship lurches and they fall. The ship has veered off course to avoid space debris, but some of it has hit the nuclear reactor, forcing the crew to reject all of the Aniara's fuel. Captain Chiffon wishes to speak to the passengers, so everyone files into an auditorium. He discusses the incident and announces that it'll be impossible to get back on track unless they come in contact with a planet or star and use its gravitational pull to turn around. Chiffon is unsure when this will occur, but it will take at least two years. Passengers are shocked because this trip was supposed to take three weeks. Back in Mima, Libidel wails because she's going to miss her son's fourth birthday. Murr and Shibeba try to soothe her before Shibeba falls to the ground in a trance. Murr fits a pillow underneath Shibeba's head and does her best to get Libidel to lay down. Reception is doing their best to manage a disgruntled crowd and pass out snacks courtesy of the captain. Meanwhile, the captain and some crew members are discussing algae production for food stores and how it'll affect oxygen supplies. Over the third week, passengers are finding ways to divert themselves. Murr gives a class in Mima when a large group interrupts, trying to use the simulation to escape reality. She waves them off because Mima is at capacity. Murr tries to speak to Chiffon about the influx of visitors and how she needs help managing all the passengers interested in the experience. However, she is brushed off. She blows off steam, swimming laps in the Aniara's pool. Soon, she is joined by Izajo. Later, Murr asks the astronomer when she thinks they'll be able to turn around. The astronomer says Chiffon and the crew have been lying. They will not be able to return to their course. As the astronomer snores, Murr tosses and turns, unable to sleep. She leaves her cabin for a drink, but has a panic attack, running to Mima to find relief. The following day, when Murr arrives at work, she finds a man having a panic attack himself. He accuses Murr of lying to them and says that the astronomer is telling others the ship won't be able to return to the course after all. Aniara's security brings him into Mima and they manage to sedate him using the simulation. Murr discusses with Chiffon about needing more personnel to manage the growing need for Mima and he agrees. In the third year of the journey, the passengers have further found ways to enjoy themselves and distract from the fact that they are still aboard the Aniara. Murr dances in a club and approaches the bar for a drink. She meets a man named Daisy, and they have a romantic interaction, which Isagel sees. Murr watches as Isagel lays in Mima, and when she gets up, Murr tries to explain to Isagel that what she saw with Daisy meant nothing. Murr talks to the astronomer about Isagel and her feelings for her. Later, Murr lays in Mima and has her own memories played back to her, but Mima is beginning to show some distressing images. She imagines that she is out in a lake in the middle of the woods watching as birds begin to disintegrate and fall from the sky. She jolts awake and finds a new group of passengers is ready for their Mima relief. As she and the new Mima host supervise the group, Murr hears a voice telling her a passenger is in distress and needs help. She rushes down to find him and takes a look at what he's seeing. In his memory, he and others are fleeing from something dangerous, 
Mer pulls him from the room and they collapse in the hallway. Panicked, Mer returns to the room and one by one looks at everyone's memories. Alarmed at what she sees, she cancels the session early and sends everyone away. Mer goes to speak with Chiffon, but he is angry with her about canceling the session. Mer says Mima needs to rest from being overwhelmed by all the memories she is receiving, but the captain is not happy with her response. Meanwhile, a group of people enter Mima looking for relief, but Mer can't stop them. Mima begins to get more and more overwhelmed, self-destructing until there is nothing left but smoke and ashes. Mourning the loss of Mima, passengers leave cards and pictures as a memorial for her. Angry passengers begin to sow seeds of discontent that Mer would stay inside Mima at night and keep her all to herself. Mer is visited by the astronomer, who tells her she is to be punished for Mima's malfunction. Isagel goes to speak to Chiffon on her behalf, but is met with aggression. Chiffon gets too close to Isagel, and she uses self-defense to stop him. Mer leaves her cabin only to be spotted by the crew who are coming to interrogate her. She slips onto an elevator that malfunctions and drops her off on a poorly lit floor. Walking through the halls, she passes suspicious looking passengers. The flight crew apprehend Mer, but physically assault her. During year four, Chiffon and the attendant investigate the body of a man found to have committed suicide. Many passengers are beginning to do so for fear of being trapped on the Aniara forever, whereas others are forming cults. Mer, Ezegel, and other passengers stand in a line as a crew member gives them new assignments. Ezegel and Mer go into a room to change into their new uniforms and have a romantic moment together before parting ways for work. Mer's new job is to teach the kids on the ship hoping that someone will discover a way to return to Mars. Later, Mer and Isagel swim in the pool and enjoy time together. They step into a sauna where they encounter Shababa, who invite them to join a fertility cult in the deceased Mima. There, they paint their faces, remove their clothes, and begin a large orgy. Mer leans into the experience, but Isagel isn't happy. Year five, a year later, Mer tries to cheer up Isagel, who is pregnant. She is unhappy with their life on the Aniara, Mer returns to her old room and shares a piece of her plan with the astronomer. She wants to create a beam screen to escape the darkness on the Aniara. Mer discusses her plan with Chiffon, and he shoots down her plan and tells her her responsibilities are to the kids she's teaching. Isagel gives birth, but is still experiencing heavy depression and is tempted to end the baby's life soon after it's born. Good news arrives though. The crew has discovered a potential rescue ship. Chiffon makes an announcement that the ship is near only 14 months away. In preparing to connect with the rescue ship, crew members run simulations. Chiffon makes an announcement that they will begin docking with the rescue ship promptly and for passengers to return to their seats. Grappling hooks are launched from the Aniara to retrieve a giant probe from space that hopefully contains the fuel they need to turn around. Scientists, including Mer, run tests on the probe, but the results are inconclusive. The astronomer grows depressed that the probe will not rescue them and that they will all die on board. Back in the hangar, the astronomer feels as though the captain and his crew are spreading false hope about the rescue. When Chiffon approaches the astronomer about her spreading fear, he shoots her out of anger. Mer and the other passengers mourn the death of the astronomer before sending her body out into space. After the funeral, Mer tries to avoid her reality by having a romantic interaction with Daisy. During the interaction, an announcement is made for everyone to return to their seats. The ship experiences a large tremor that results in a lot of passenger deaths. Back inside Mima, Mer continues to create her beam screen to hopefully help Isagel and others with their depression. She successfully is able to project the image of a waterfall out into space. She goes to tell Isagel about her success, but finds that she has hung herself. Mer does her best to revive her, but Isagel is dead. Mer runs to the bathroom to find that Isagel drowned their baby as well. During year 10, there are few people left aboard the Aniara. Remaining passengers sit in the auditorium, preparing to hear Chiffon address them. Mer is awarded a medal for the creation of her beam screen. She notices Chiffon's hand is bloody from an assumed suicide attempt. In year 24, the last few passengers, including Mer, sit among themselves and pray, reminiscing about Earth. The Aniara reaches the Lyra constellation and finds an inhabitable planet in the 5,981,407th year, but there are no survivors aboard.